this little Z compilation at the end of the year, we which should. said on camera. Yes. All right, so today we're discussing relationships between variables and largely the words associated with them. So, directly proportional on your sheet uses this funky sideways half of an infinity sign. If we say y is directly proportional to x, it basically heads up with a line through the origin. So it might be like y is equal to 3x or y is equal to 4x. And feel free to draw in a tiny little graph with a line going through the origin in that little section of that graph of your notes. So direct proportionality implies it goes through the origin. This equation is what? 1 across 3 up, 1 across 3 up. That equation point is y equals 3x. But any line that goes through the origin that's a straight line, we will say it's directly proportional. And a way you can think of this is every donut costs three dollars. So two donuts, six bucks, three donuts, nine dollars, etc. It goes up in direct proportionality. Very close to that is something we call linearly related. And I've made a mistake on your notes. Linear related is meant to be y equals mx plus c. I've just for some reason forgotten the plus c. In this case here, it should be plus 4 for my example graph, but you guys can draw any example graph. Something that's linear related is a straight line that doesn't go through the origin. So it's just a notation. It's either through the origin, which is direct proportion, not through the origin. It's just linearly related. I'll give you a little second to sketch a graph. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but you can fill that here. Do you want? Uh, no. You can look you can go on your book. Is, yeah. is this one, I'm not sure if it's... I hope it's still there. Because I have a folder, but I'm not sure if it's I can find it at the... You can read the table. Okay. <laughs> it would already be in the first place. Sure. <laughs> it, it actually probably was. I stored it in my little folder that folds forward like that. I'm not blaming someone. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I haven't tried it down yet. Go on, quick. Storming around. Alright. Second type is inversely proportional. So we say things are inversely proportional using this notation here, y is proportional to 1 on x. What that's saying is that as 1 increases, the other decreases. So a classic sort of example, which I've just cut straight from your book, is as more people do a job, it decreases in time. So the example there here is as you have more mowers, the time decreases. And what you might notice is if you multiply the pairs of numbers together, you always get the same result. So things that are inversely proportional, the pairs will always multiply to the same thing. So one way we can express this equation is xy equals 60. So that graph there could easily be described as xy equals 60. We don't tend to like graphing things like that. Our calculator prefers we put x on its sorry put y on its own. So normally you'll see it as y equals 60 on x, where you divide both sides by x. But both of those would be an acceptable equation for this particular graph. And can you sort of see where they're getting them from? All right. Now this only occurs in the first quadrant. Did you guys do quadrants last year? Oh, yeah. Sort of ish. First. Second, third, fourth. So this is only existing in the first quadrant, all positive. If we go into the other quadrant, we get what's called a reciprocal function. Now my notes are slightly different to yours. But a reciprocal function has a pair of asymptotes. So asymptotes occur, have you guys discussed asymptotes? Yeah. Lovely. Asymptotes typically occur. Vertical asymptotes, anyway, occur when the denominator is zero. So here, as x tends towards zero, you'll get an asymptote either side. You'll also get an asymptote as x tends towards infinity. So as x here gets extremely large, 20 divided by an extremely large number is almost zero. Never quite zero, but it's very close to zero. Meaning as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, this graph keeps dropping down and gets closer and closer to the axis here, but never crosses it. Same on the other side. 20 divided by a massive negative number, say 20 divided by minus a million, is very, very, very close to zero, slightly on the negative side. And 
there is a sort of special language we use around this that you may have come across last year. If we had, say, y is equal to 20 on x, we would say that as x approaches infinity, so that's as x gets really, really large, y approaches 0 from above. And it's this little positive sign you may not have seen before. What I'm saying is that the graph gets close to zero and we're approaching it from above. Similarly, for this same graph, as x approaches negative infinity, so as we go off the other way from negative infinity, y still approaches zero, so y still gets close to zero, this time from below. So it seems odd having a positive zero and a negative zero, but these signs here are indicators of which direction we're coming from, meaning we're coming from above or coming from below. Below or above. Does that sort of notation make sense? I know we haven't done any maths, but it's just using this sort of language to describe a graph. As we get very, very close to something, what happens? And particularly using those little signs to give us an indication of direction. All right, one other thing I should note is, do you guys have calculators? Yeah. Lovely. Can you grab your calculator and just try graphing y equals 20 on x? I think you might have to go upstairs. It's all right, if it's still upstairs, I'm going to graph it on my calculator on the screen. And we can all play along together. Why is it here? Uh, y equals 20 on x. No, the y is already in there. Um, Alright, so if you jogging your memory of how to do this, you should go into graph mode, so number five. You probably can, yeah? Yeah, look at this. And then you want 20 on X. So 20 divided by then find the little X button here and hit equals and then hit equals again and yours might look like that. Can you zoom out? You can hit zoom, um, you hit what? F2 is zoom. Huh? Oh, so you say we go graph, and then and then you type in the equation of 20 on x. Now, yeah, um, they've arrived and they're in the library. So if you order them through the school, you can grab them in the library. Um, if you haven't ordered them through the school, okay, then you have to get it. Uh, if anyone hasn't ordered them, you can get them on Facebook, Amazon, or Oxford. Yeah. yeah. Um, mine hasn't done it. Has anyone's calculator weirdly joined this line to that line? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, depending on the zoom, I might have shown, but depending on how you've zoomed it, your calculator will try and jump the asymptote. <laughs> so, mine is behaving itself, but don't trust your calculator. Sometimes that line there, it draws in an asymptote and makes it look like there's a graph on that line. So it'll draw in a line here, which is a real track. But you absolutely don't trust that. If the bot denominator is zero, there will be an asymptote there whether the graph is drawn correctly or not. All right, we only have 10 minutes left. But what I would like you to do is have a shot at these questions. So it's not doing every question from that set. The questions are down the bottom of your notes sheet. We are sort of speed running this bit because it's largely, it's largely conversational notation based. So, A, B, and C, a couple of questions from each.